Welcome back, folks, to Scarlet Hollow with me, Cornus Knight, as our character Jason and Stella venture into the darkness of the woods. You and Stella inch towards a tree line as she signs her flashlight into the woods. As she approaches a series of weak clocks, a uh, clock call, um, a weak clocks call out from the nearby bush as he creeps closer. Maybe Duke's birds weren't eaten after all, she declares. Before something grabs and drags it into the drag. What was that? Something dragged it away. What the? What the hell was that? Hold on, I got to play that back. Holy shit! He mutters. I'm guessing it must be maybe two, three feet tall. Doesn't look hairy either, so I can't. I can. So I can think we can rule this out, skunk ape. But whatever it is, it's one of Duke's. It has one of Duke's chickens. It looks like it's headed north. Let's go after it. Um, right behind you, I was on board until with this whole thing, and, but now that we found something. Oh no, what have you gotten me into? Yeah, it's like, oh no, what have you gotten me into? Oh no, what have you gotten me into, you say? Just the best part of cryptid hunting, but let's talk about it later. If we're catching this thing, we've got to go now. Stella sprints into the woods in pursuit, leaving you no choice but to run after her, Gretchen excitedly pulling you along by her leash. Yeah, this is the thing, which is like, this is not a good idea. She trips and falls. Oof. You okay? Jason inquires, are you okay? Ah yeah, I'm alright, just tripped on something weird. Oh no, this poor thing must be one of Dukes. Oh Jesus, it's still alive. Investigate the chicken. You move towards Stella to get closer to look at the chicken. Don't let Gretchen too close, says Stella. She's, she'll try to bite, take a bite if you don't stop her. Like, see, this has got the same tumour stuff on it as the deer had. You hold Gretchen's leaf close to your chest. She seems nervous, squirming slightly against her harness. Examine the growth. Good God, at first you thought it might be a tumour, but this is something else. The skin is stretched taut. The grove pulses beneath. Keen eye, looking more closely at the grove, you can see something squirming inside. Examine the head. This poor little chicken chicken's eyes look up at you, gazing over, but still rolling around their sockets of unfortunate life. Examine the wings. Looks like what it... Uh, looks like this is where Stella just slipped on, slipped on. The wings are barely still attached, but it seems to have least the chicken, least chicken's concerns. Having investigated to your heart's content, you turn away to give Stella room to film. Um, it seems you find one of du Duke's chickens, folks. She's not looking good. I hesitate to speculate, but it just really seems to have some sort of growth under her skin. Could it be a tumour? Could it be something else? Either way, I don't think there's much that can be done for her at this mo at this point. Jeez, I'm going to have to put some massive content warnings on this video. Hey, do you hear that? What in Sam's hell are you doing here? I told, didn't I tell you to? Bertie? Oh, Bertie, what's wrong, darling? Good guard, says Duke. Did you all see what did it to her? Palpable threat, and I'm, I'm not telling you shit until you wave, um, after you've waved that gun in our faces. No, but I'm pretty sure we can hear them, you declare. We didn't see anything. We didn't see whatever did this to your bird, but I think we can hear them right now. Ah, don't tell me you're caught in this Stella's nonsense. Duke, I'm so sorry. We were on the trail when we found her like this. Put this camera away, for God's sake, girl. I don't want to be another of your videos. No one needs to see me like this. No one needs to see Bertie like this. You can't put her online. You won't. You wouldn't put her online, would you? Not when she's like this, all swirling, hurting. Duke, did you hear what Jason said? I think they're coming closer. Come on, you sons of bitches! Duke, don't shoot them. We have no idea what's hap what will happen. You hear that, Stella? They ain't the sound of something peace-like. Whatever these things are, they're paying for what they did to my girls. Come on, whatever your name is, grab the flashlight and help me. Help me line up a good shot.
As the creature in the tree line grows louder and louder, more numerous Gretchen violently strains against her harness. Let's go cow for build. Tuck Gretchen under your arm and dive for the flashlight. Powerful build. You heroically dive forward, tuckling Gretchen under one arm and grabbing the flashlight with the other. I said aim the damn thing quick. Light up the woods. Perfect, as whatever that thing is comes crawling out from behind the bus. And you blast it with a shotgun dupe. Just grazed it, but we should make it pretty easy to track. Uh, Stella? Yeah, blood trail is pretty hard to miss. Guess we know it wasn't mountain lions after all, says Stella. For it didn't look like cryptids, any cryptid I've heard of either. This is going to be one hell of a video. We've got to go after them while we still have the chance. Thanks for taking care of Gretchen, by the way. I can take her from here. I'll be damned if I let her chase after those things alone. Alone, you have noticed but to follow Duke, Stella and Gretchen into the darkness. Go after them. You steal your nerves and run into the unknown. Because I'm not being left alone here. In the middle of in the middle of the woods in the dark on my own. With monsters everywhere. As you push deeper into the woods, an unearthly sound once again surrounds you. Guys, you declare. The blood trail cuts through here. Come on, we must be close, says Stella, as the things draw in. Damn it, girl, snarls Duke. Are you trying to get us lost? Slow down. There's more of them. Look, there's even tiny ones. There's a clearing up ahead. I think I'm going to be sick. Lord, that smell. The shrieks pull back into steady whispers as you, Stella, and Duke stumble upon the putrid bodies of dozens of dying, dead and dying animals. A sinking realising pulls up your gut. This is their nest. And you are surrounded. A sinking realisation pulled at your gut. This is a nest and you're surrounded. Yeah, there's, like, like, there's tons of them. I'm not going to fight these things. Get all the footage you need, Stella. I can take him. Yeah, we need to leave. We need to leave. That kid is right, Stella. They're circling us because they're protecting their brood. Or whatever it is. They've been... Pat um, they've been pl planting in these animals or whatever it is they've been planting these animals we have to get the hell out of here while we still can yeah right let's go I think we've got plenty of footage just as you follow Stella and Duke into the mad dust for the woods so too do the unearthly hollows and whispers of the nest in the highest branches of a tree and down the forest floor they're all around you closely keeping pace with your all out sprint Quick, my trucks! Quick, my trucks down this way! You make it to the road, but three of the creatures stand before you and Duke's truck. Are you waiting for Duke? Shoot them! You, you shout, Duke! You know what they are here for. This is what you want, roars Duke. This is what you want, you sons of bitches. Fine, take her, take her, and leave us be. Duke, says Stella. Get in the truck and I'll get the hell out of here. Duke, do we have to take the truck back? I can just walk those creatures left. I'll be, I'll be fine. Stella, now's really not the time, snarls Duke. Alright, I'll do it. The three of us sit in the silence as Duke drives back into town. The ride feels both like an eternity and like nothing at all. Eventually, it's over. And you find yourself outside of Stella's house. Thanks for my for taking me home, Duke. Any time, but Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, what were those things? I have no idea. I've never heard of anything like them, but I've got a ton of footage, nothing really clear. But it's a start. Hmm. I better go check in with Bol. He'll be worrying about me. You and your friends stay safe. Look like there's something. Look like those things didn't follow us. But well, no point in t talking about the, the butts. Just look out for yourselves. Can you take me home? Can you take me home? You inquire. Hell no, I ain't your private self first. Stay with Stella tonight. She's got the space. 
ain't you, girl? Yeah, totally. I've got a guest bedroom and with a bed and everything, seats even. They're take care. They're taken care of. And there you are, back in town, away from the woods with no one but Stella in sight. Your phone buzzes in your pocket. Now you're back in town. You must have finally got reception again. Oh dear. Lots of Tabitha missed calls. Six missed calls from Tabitha. And 15 text messages. Call her. You try and call Tabitha back, but it goes straight to voicemail. Text her that you're okay. You text Tabitha back and let her know that you're okay. The message sits unread. Um, yikes, Tabitha's been blowing up my phone, you declare. I guess she must be worried about you, Sister Stella. God, what a mess this night has been. Why on earth did you ask Duke if you could if you could walk back? I hope you don't mind me asking, but why on earth did you ask if Duke, ask Duke if you could walk back? That's a fair question. I just had some bad experience with cars. I don't know how to drive them, and I don't like getting into them unless it's literally a question of life or death. Which I guess tonight was. Sorry if I rooted you out. What do you make of everything that we saw? What do you make of everything we saw, you declare? I don't know. I've seen some read... I've never... Sorry. I don't know. I haven't seen or read about anything like this. Although, maybe... We've got to find out more about those things. She declares. The library doesn't open for a while, so any real research will have to wait until the morning. That being said, there is someone in town who might have some useful information. Her place isn't far. You should, uh, you should, we should head out now before it gets any later. Let's do it. I should check in with Tabitha. Yeah. I, I should probably check in with Tabitha, you say. My friend's place is on the way back and stopping by shouldn't take long. You sure you don't want to stop in first? I know I won't I, d I know I wouldn't want to head up the mountain road by myself after everything that's happened tonight. When you put it like that, how can I say no? Yeah. When you put it like that, how can I say no? Cool, let's go. Safety in numbers, after all. If puss comes to self, we can just throw the pug at them. I hope she's still awake. Still a knocks on the door. Keen eye. Out of the corner of your eye, you spot a shadowy figure staring at you from across... Across the road, he didn't. He did. He, you didn't hear him approach. Okay, he's got blood on his um, shirt, and he's got glowing eyes. Stella, I think someone's watching us. You say, Stella, I think someone's watching us. She turns to look. Jason. Jesus, whispers Stella. Welcome home. Before you can respond, the door behind you swings open, and oh, the woman stands in the entryway. Go home, Wayne. I can't help you tonight. You look back and the figure is already gone. Disappeared into the shadows of the night. I'm sorry about that, Stella. Some people just can't be helped, says the old woman at the door. What brings you out so late? And who is this? She looks at you. Hi, Mrs. Frossy. Frossy, this is, um, Jason. Is it okay for us to come in? Of course, of course. You're in luck. I just put on the water for hibiscus tea. And for goodness sake, you can call me Silby. You're an adult now, after all. Welcome to my little nook. It's nice to finally meet you, Jason. I'm so sorry to hear about your mother. Vivian was such a lovely soul, and she's been sorely missed in the holler. And now poor Perlina is gone as well. Do let me know if anything we need while you're in town. Who was that outside? Who was that outside, you inquire? Just a very sick man. You don't need to worry about him. The fact that he had, like, cat-like reflective eyes and blood on his... on, like, running down his front makes me really worried. You knew my mum? You knew my mother, you inquire? Of course, dear. She was a good friend of mine many years ago. She was a, such a lovely woman. She would come by some time. I can I can delight you with, her, with unsavory tales of her youth. How did you know that she was dead? You inquire. Oh, Polina was a chatty woman. Not much went on, but I didn't get an earful of bless her heart. Yeah, because remember, in I think it was the first video, we found out that she'd been 
talking about us all over town. I never met Perlina. I never met the woman. You don't have to pass on your condolences to me. I have no feelings about the woman. Ah, oh, that's fair, child. But it seems like the right thing to do. Yeah, it is the polite thing to do. We need help, you say. Ah, yes, I suppose pleasantries can wait for another time. What got you here so late? You seem troubled. You know about, you know about weird stuff, right? Unexplained stuff, says Stella. I'm not so I followed you. I know which oil to use for which ass aches. I know a bit about classical spiritualism. Just what sort of unexplained things are you talking about? She looks over towards Stella. We ran into some creatures out in the woods. These things. I don't even know how to describe them. Hmm. I can't say I know much about local wildlife. My daughter's always had a brighter gift for nature than I. This wasn't this wasn't local wildlife, Mrs. Fossey. Here I can show you. Stella pulls out the camera and tilts the screen towards Sylvie. Oh, one of your little videos. She stares. And she stares. And her face goes pale. Where was this? She declares sharply. Up the mountain to the northwest. Within the town limits? Yes, she says Stella. I see. Is there a way to make the video bigger and louder if you can? I need to plug the memory card into a computer. I could go back and get mine. No need. Kinika should still be awake. She can lead us. She can lend us hers. You better come with Stella. I'm so to be more willing to help a friend than her nosy mother. Kinika, come out. We could use a little help. What, Mum? As the girl opens the door. As the young lady opens the door, I say, oh. Hey, Stella. And Gretchen. Who is the good potato? And a stranger. What the hell are you doing in my house? I was helping Stella with a video and something terrible happened. I was helping Stella with filming a video in the woods and something terrible happened. Tabitha's cousin. She suddenly cuts in. Yep. The thing is, probably Jason's at the point where he's sick of having to introduce himself at this point. It's like, I was really tempted to say, like, like after everything that's going on, I'm not in the mood to introduce myself, but that just seemed a bit rude, even for Jason. Yep. Sweetie, we were wondering if we could borrow your laptop. Stella and her friend her video to show us. It's really important. Kinaki. Kanaka. So, kan uh, Kanaka? Kanaka. Okay. My room's a mess. I just br I'll just bring it... I'll just bring it out of here, there. Heads up, Kanaka. This is graphic. There's a lot of dead and sick animals on the recording. You know I had a hardened stomach than any of our friends, so I'll press play. Silence washes over the room as the video plays. Stella, what the hell is this? Sybil goes, is still quiet and grim. I'm sorry if you had to see this, but Jason and I have no idea how to make heads or tails of it, says Stella. Stella, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I'm fine, really. I'm okay. Well, I'm not fine. I'm fine too, thanks for asking. Yeah, I'm fine too, thanks for asking. The evil three have looked at you and saw what to say. Unfortunately, yeah, that seemed a bit snarky, but like, um, I think they apparent, like, they're like, oh, worried about Stella. It's like, yeah, this bloke just got into town and got attacked by monsters. Unfortunately, if these creatures are what I think they are, the two of you are embodied in, some quite, in something quite sinister. My grandmother called them ditchlings, and they are a terrible omen. A sign of greater suffering and destruction to come. Mum, come on, whatever's doing this is serious. Stop scaring Stella and Jason with this tail pop crap. Can you curse, sweetie? Let your mother talk. These creatures themselves are harmless to people, despite their grisly scene in the woods. But just as birds flock before a storm, ditchlings congregate where tragedy is soon to fall. To see one is to be cursed by fate, to see so many in one place is. Sybil holds her silence. Jesus, Mum. They clearly have had a, a rough night. They don't need this. It's okay, Kinaka. 
This is helpful. Still, whatever these things are, they ain't magic. You can't rule. We can't rule that out. Not after what we saw. But fine. Let's focus on what we know. Whatever they are, they're doing something to those animals. You saw the nest. What? What were? What were those? What were those growths? Um, keen eye. I saw something living in that chicken. I saw something squirming around in that chicken. Maybe it's some sort of parasitic larval stage, part of their life cycle, says Kanaka. But I don't want to jump to any conclusions about something this out there, not without doing some research or taking to a biologist. I'm sure there's a rational explanation that will clear all of this up. Silby doesn't look convinced. Oh dear, I've forgotten entirely about the tea I put on. Let me fix you up a, cup of cu a couple of cups. It will help soothe your nerves. I don't know. It's getting late and I said let Jason get some rest. I ran him ragged today with all the hiking and running through the woods in terror. Um... You can keep going, I'm still wired. Yeah, I'm ready to pass out. It was nice meeting you, though. You don't have to leave on my account. Thank God, let this miserable night finally end. I'm tired of shit. Yeah, let's go with that one. Like, after everything he's gone through, like, thank God, let this miserable night finally end. I'm tired of shit. Thank God, let this miserable night finally end. I'm tired of shit. I shouldn't have gone out out in the first place. I shouldn't have up for this. Cool it, Jason, says Kinnaker. I'm sorry, I had no idea how bad it would get out there. Like, it seems out of place for my character to say that, but like, just, just think of everything that he's gone through. Like, he's turned up for an aunt's funeral he didn't really know, gets dragged out into the woods, which is, oh yeah, fun, we'll, we'll go and record pictures of things that don't exist. And then like, all this happens, and it's like, nope, I'm done, I'm going to bed, I've had enough. I'm sorry, I had no idea how bad it would get out of it. It's never like this, I swear. Don't apologize, Stella. Here's hoping a good night's rest will make it all seem like a bad dream. Stella, I'll send you home with some of my ho housemade peppermint tea. A couple of a cup of day does one just to soothe the soul. Jason, it, it might do it, it might do you sorry, Jason, it might do you well too. Bye, Stella. It's you tomorrow, okay? Call me if you need to talk. Thanks, Kineka. I see ya. Bye, Jason. I don't think she likes us very much, but like at this point, probably Jason has had enough of had enough of all this sort of like miscellaneous stuff going on and just wants to go to bed. It's it's, it's excellent ice to ice. It's excellent ice to warm, though it might the night's getting chillier. Warm will probably be best. Helps wake up the bones. Still looks you. Be careful out there, both of you. Sylvie turns and closes the door behind you. Alright, let's head back home. My home, I mean. And here we are. You're welcome to stay the night if you want. I should probably head back before Tapper has a uh, Knipson. Um, I should probably head back and check on Tabitha. Let's probably head back and check on Tabitha, you say. That's sweet of you. Are you sure you're okay heading back up the mountain alone? Sylvie said those things were harmless. I'm more terrified of Tabitha than those things in the woods. Let's say that. Honestly, I'm more afraid of Tabitha mad than I am those things in the woods. Aha, yeah. Tabby can be really intimidating, says Stella. Well, I won't stop you if you really want to go back. Here's my number. Call me when you get there, okay? And good luck. You and Stella exchange numbers. I'll see you tomorrow. Yep. We're in this together. Yeah. Well, like, we're still stuck here a week, so there's no point. I'm leaving town as soon as I can. So, like, it looks like I don't have much of a choice. It's not like I have much of a choice, you say. Uh, I guess not. We're in this together now. Stay safe, buddy. You begin the long hike back up the scar through the Scarlet Estate alone. Continue down the path. Almost home. You made it. You have salvation inside you make a mad dash for the door. Try to open the door. As you reach for the door knob, the door swings open. 
Where the hell have you been? Says Tabitha. I called you back. I called you back as soon as I had reception. Did you? I didn't notice. Do you know someone called Wayne? Do you know anyone named Wayne? I have no idea what you're talking about. So you go by tab for her. I saw some horrible things tonight. Look, I got sucked in something. I got sucked in something. It was weird. Look, I got sucked in something. It was. It's sort of like. Look, I got sucked in something. Sorry to worry. This stellar girl had me come with her to, on this night hike to find cryptids. Oh, so you met Stella then, uh, and I explained to her thing, and she's gotten you all worked up. I'm gonna go to bed. I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, okay, I need to leave town as fast as possible. Wait, you don't want to hang out? Can you tuck me in? Say nothing. Okay. So, like, okay, good night. Because, like, yeah, but the thing is, we still can't go anywhere for the funeral. Jason did say that it would help Stella with her investigation, so we can't do that when it's, like, really late at night that she works, so probably hanging out is a bad idea. And he's not going to say that, so yeah. Okay, good night. Okay, and good night. Tap your lonely estate, a sound of wind whistles through the house, giving you an easy feeling in your gut. It's probably best to turn in and try to leave the nightmare behind you. What well, the night behind you. As you settle into the room, you remember that Stella asked you to call her once you, get, you got back. Let's call her. You pull out your phone and call. Hey, how, you, how are you? Did you make it back alright? Oh good, yeah. How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm alright, how are you? Totally fine, I mean, as fine as it can be. I guess we don't have to worry about me. Go get some Z's, okay? I'll see you tomorrow. From the relative safety of this com comfortable bed, the events of the past evening seem like something they've happened to someone else, for you can still clearly picture the terror you felt in those moments. For now, you're safe and warm. Eventually, the sun will rise and chase away the monsters and make them seem like nothing but bad dreams. Maybe tomorrow, if you're lucky... You'll wake up in the normal world and have a boring week in the mountains with your sour-faced cousin. It's nice though, but deep down you can't help but worry that things will only get worse. The sun rises and the creatures in the dark lurk still. The wind blows through this dying mining town. Past the town hall built in 1820. Looks through the window of a woman's, a woman, or someone's window. So with magical books and tea, maybe kinakas, kinakas. Into another room. There's someone crying into their hands. And a third room with blood stains on the floor. And finally to a field with alpacas, or maybe llamas with a hole of something lurking inside of it. Towards the mind. Now, mind that's employs people in Scarlet Hollow. What awaits for us in this place? Who knows? Who knows? As this has been the first episode of the Scarlet Hollow series. And we shall all see where this tale takes us. See you all next time, folks, for the next chapter of Scarlet Hollow. I've been Cornish Knight, and the second episode of this series will come out on the 11th. Goodbye. <laughs>